Hey, what's up, guys? Joe Simpson here. I just got the new Mac Mini. Hey guys, welcome back to TechWake TV and sorry, it's been a very long time since I've done anything fruitful in terms of videos or um, tutorials. I wanted to come to you today and talk about the Mac Mini. First, let me give you a little background of what I was editing on prior to the Mac Mini and then I'll talk about some of the reasons why I went ahead and pulled the trigger even though this computer now is probably about a year old and there's a new one right around the corner and I'll talk to you about why I decided to just go ahead and move forward with this one and it seemed to be the right call for me. I've been a Mac user for a long time, and I really like Macs a lot, and I like Final Cut Pro. But I do know the danger of only learning one editing system and using one type of computer system, and I decided a few months back to spread my wings and go back to the PC and get into DaVinci Resolve. Wonderful experience. I built a great machine. It was a... Um, AMD Ryzen 7. It had a 16 gig video card, 128 gigs of RAM. I had SSDs, NVMe drives. I mean, it was like about a $3,200 computer. Even with all of that horsepower, there were times when I was using DaVinci Resolve and certain codecs and certain compression ratios that the machine would still hiccup and skip and lag. And it actually just kind of drove me nuts because I thought after spending this much money, on this kind of a machine, you would think it would be far more seamless than it was. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't perfect. And my experience with Final Cut on the Mac, actually, it was a fairly old iMac, 2013. I had a wonderful experience with that computer. I had 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte SSD. Until my 4K files hit the 10-bit range, I was doing just fine. As soon as I get into the 10-bit stuff, I started to have to convert things back to ProRes to make it operate smoothly, even in Final Cut. So that computer was flawless up to 1080p. And to be honest, uh, that's all you need. I mean, if you're doing 1080p footage or 4K footage, it's not super high bit rate. You can still do all that on fairly old machines. So a new computer isn't necessarily the way to go. So look, this is TechWake. I want to talk about living in the slipstream of technology, not being on the most expensive cutting edge. So my decision came about um, I decided to sell my computer about four months ago. To my surprise, I sold my video card. You guys have to sit down for this one for $2,400. I don't know what's going on with video cards. They're like more expensive than cocaine because I sold that thing for $2,400. I sold the rest of my computer for a few hundred bucks. So by the time I was done, I literally recouped all of my money back from my PC. At that point, I was at a fresh reset. The only reason I stayed away from the Mac was because of price. Um, all the, the Mac equipment, all the Apple equipment is, is more expensive than this, the equivalent PC until the M1 came out. So the M1 was quite a game changer. The M1 put this little computer that cost $699 in the leagues of computers that cost over 3000 bucks. I mean, it's just amazing what they can do with this chipset and architecture with this new M1 design. Now, as soon as I saw the M1 and I thought, oh, well, they're putting it in the MacBook Air and they're putting it in the Mac Mini, I decided, hey, I'm going to get the MacBook Air. If it's the same thing and it's very efficient with battery, I can sell my MacBook Pro, which I did, and I picked up the MacBook Air with some spare change, and I had enough money left over for the Mac Mini. So the MacBook Air I used for quite a while with this little gadget from CalDigit. And this thing right here is a device that allows you to hook up a monitor, some hard drives, some USB ports, and do some SD cards. So I would bring it downstairs, I would hook it up and plug everything in and start working. But I started to realize pretty soon that I'm not a docking computer kind of guy. Some people like to dock their computers and they only have the money maybe for one computer, so they want the best of both worlds. So the MacBook Air being portable, uh, good on battery, and dockable is a good option. But I still had the need to replace my desktop computer, and I thought, well, I'm not going to just buy another M1 Mac because I'm going to wait for the M1X, the better one, to come out later this year. And I kept waiting and waiting. And I thought, well, I'm going to get more RAM. I'm going to get the M1X. And I'm and, and after a while, I started thinking, that's just going to cost more. And I don't know if I want to sink another two to 2,500. The reason I'm even looking at the Mac Mini is because I already have a 4K monitor in front of me. And my monitors, my speakers, I've got all of my stuff, lighting, 
everything I need auxiliary and accessory wise, I already had these, these, uh, trackpad and I had the keyboard, um, everything I need for this computer was already sitting right in front of me. So I didn't really need a whole computer. So I thought the mini is going to be the way to go. Cause it's the one piece that I can replace and use all the other auxiliary parts. And actually after using the M1 MacBook air, I realized that I didn't need any more horsepower than these things give me. I can do a 4K 10-bit file right out of my Panasonic with no conversion and, and not using proxy files or doing any type of down resing. I can use these things straight out of my camera and I don't get any lag or any skipping or any issues with it at all. So, and that's in Final Cut. Now, DaVinci Resolve, I would say is pretty seamless. It's better than the PC was. Occasionally I can get it to dip and blip, but I think that's more of a DaVinci Resolve thing and less a computer thing. But what was really nice is once I got rid of the PC and I got back to this computer, I could jump in to Final Cut again. And that was really nice because Final Cut on a Mac, it's hard to explain. I don't think there's a more buttery editing experience, if that's even a way to describe it, than Final Cut on a Mac. It's just the best, in my opinion, that there is. Now, some pro editors might say, you know, we can't do... Uh, as much versatility as far as the color grading. You don't have as much versatility as far as some of the special effects. And I would say, yeah, maybe to a limit. Um, but most of what you can produce on Final Cut is going to be on par with semi-pro to pro type of production, I think. There are things in DaVinci Resolve that I like better than Final Cut, but not that many. When it comes to the editing process and the, the workflow as far, as far as cutting a video and piecing things together, I prefer Final Cut. If it comes to color grading, like if I was doing like an indie film and I really wanted to do some intricate color grading and do some, um, you know, selections and grades and layers, I would say DaVinci is your guy. Honestly, I really, really like Final Cut. I have both on this computer. I can run both, but I'm happy with Final Cut. If you're sitting there like me and you're thinking, I don't know if I want to buy the M1 because the other computer's right around the corner, you're never going to be able to keep up with it. It was an easy decision for me because I have another YouTube channel and my YouTube income had gotten up to about a thousand bucks. And I thought that would be the sweet spot. So I transferred the Google AdSense money down to my account. I took the cash called a friend. She helped me buy the computer. She works at Apple. I got a little discount. I'm really happy because for a thousand bucks, I have plenty of machine. I don't think I'm going to grow out of this camera anytime soon. I don't think I'm going to grow out of this machine anytime soon. And I just got that wait for it, wait for it attitude and that whole anticipation of the next best thing out of my system now. And I'm going to save myself a little bit of money and get back to work doing what I like to do best, which is edit videos. I just wanted to come out and tell you guys today that the M1 Mac Mini is what they say it is. It's just as good as all the other M1 computers. It's fast. It's uh, smooth. It's efficient. It's quiet. I mean, it doesn't make any noise. I would say on the back plane, we need more ports. And I would say that's probably what you're going to get with the higher upgraded computer in the future. But there are definite workarounds and hubs and different things you can do to work with this computer and as bad as the Mac Mini might be with port selection and port quantity, it's a lot better than the MacBook Air, so I can tell you that much. Um, and it's nice to just have it sitting here. My computer's ready to go, waiting for me, so I don't have to bring it down or, or forget my Air upstairs, run upstairs, come down, dock it, have stuff in my way, risk scratching it up or whatever. So I, I kind of like my portable to be my portable, my computer to be, you know, my desk computer to be my desk computer, and I don't like to mix the two. So it was a pretty easy decision. I know it's redundant. I have two of the same computers, but that's kind of nice because I know what to expect from both of them at all times. Um, but yeah, the Mac Mini is a solid little machine and you can definitely edit on this machine. You don't have to wait if you don't want to. You can do DaVinci. You can do uh, Final Cut. You can go up to 8K with these machines. Not a problem. Are they going to be great for humongous projects and you know a lot of tracks and a lot of layers and a lot of effects? You might want to wait for the next one if that's the kind of stuff you do all the time. But if you're like me and you sit in front of a camera, you record yourself talking for 30 minutes every now and then, and you put up a YouTube video, more than enough. More than enough. It's, it's perfect. So, and it's small, quiet, efficient. And honestly, I've been looking around. I bought mine with 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD just because I could and I could afford it. If you can't afford it, don't beat yourself up. I've seen video after video after video. Now, it doesn't make logical sense because I'm kind of a 
PC uh, computer builder guy, and more RAM is always better in my mind. But I've seen video after video where it doesn't really seem to matter very much with these computers. The 8 gig of RAM or the 16 gig of RAM both function within a couple of percent of performance to one another when it comes to editing, crunching numbers, outputting, converting, whatever you do, it doesn't seem to matter. And whether you want a one terabyte SSD or if you just get the basic 256, it doesn't matter as much either because they have really fast lightning ports on the back and you can get an NVMe drive, two terabyte, plug it in there and use it as a drive uh, in replacement. And you could do that for far less than the $400 upgrade that it costs to go from you know, the 512 or the 256 up to the terabyte. So don't be afraid to buy the cheapest one and build on it because you will be able to. So that's my two cents. I'm happy you guys came today and listened. Check out the M1 Mac Mini. You might like it. I know I do. It's definitely a game changer in terms of what you get for the price. And I'm excited to see what Apple has coming up here in the future. I'll talk to you guys soon. Hang in there. Let me know your thoughts below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.